No, I've never. Well, okay, so I've we've had some weird. I've had some weird industry um, run-ins or just like exposure to like the dynamics of the wider industry, but nothing like I've never been in a situation where I'm like battling a producer over <laughs> like the line that's going to be in the thing or, or even been exposed to that. Like that's all or settled. It's like first time, time you're hired set. and you're a pilgrim. And then when they come back, you're like, yeah. just kidding. You're a robot. Now. Right. No, like, wait, <laughs> nothing like that. Uh, so like, I'm like, I'm trying to think, you know, like I was in like probably the biggest, property that i've been in i was in an episode of breaking bad but like that's i mean that's it's tv that's all like so like by the time you're shooting that's already all like on lockdown like yeah. it's very rare that it would be like no no we got to cut that scene and this guy get him off the set we got to get this guy none of, none of that kind of stuff comes up um <laughs> I mean, they were still working, tweaking lines sometimes on the set, but it was like a not, it didn't feel like, um, it felt like more like, hey, we're all collaborating, we want to make this scene as good as possible, not like mm-hmm. somebody's being a dick back in the home office and yeah. we gotta, and we don't want to do it. Um, but, so the, the probably like the biggest like, um, like industry kind of stuff was like, so coming out of, out of bounds, like, anyway, it like... In like 06, 05 maybe, uh, a couple of guys, uh, Mitch Baker and Dave Bewley, um, were we had this troop called the Edmund Bulldogs. It was basically those two, but then Jeremy Lamb and I were like the other two kind of featured players. So it was kind of a little bit like a four man sketch troop, but it was really it was really Mitch and um, and and Dave. But we ended up kind of being part of that extended kind of group. We, uh, Jeremy and I always called ourselves the George and uh, Ringo of the, of the quartet, you know, we were, you know, but, uh, uh, so we made a pilot for MTV, like back in the early days of like when MTV had the stuff and we like made a pilot, it got like, it got some feedback and some notes from execs. We made a round two of the pilot. It was entered into the thing. And from what we know, we were second in the selection process behind Human Giant. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so then, you know, Aziz Ansari goes on, has this amazing, you know, has a great career or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, and we were, like, right behind those guys. So it was like, ah, damn. And yeah. then, but in that process, they ended up owning the rights to the, even to the name of the troop. Oh, yeah. So then we had to become, we we ended up doing this other thing a couple of years later called Backpack Picnic. And we had a lot more freedom. It was in the early days of the web. And this was, again, it was like we were a little bit too early on a platform that didn't make it when streaming video was was going, you know, was trying to get up off the ground. And we did like two seasons of sketch comedy as Backpack Picnic, which was the second name. But, um, but yeah, like the indus- they uh, MTV owned the rights and the name and the wow. intellectual property, blah blah blah. That was like I guess part of the deal with the funding of the pilot was yeah. that they then owned. It. So we could, we couldn't call ourselves Emin Bulldog. It was weird, you yeah. know. Yeah, um, that's so wild. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think about those. Kinds so of like things that kind of stuff comes up all the time, you know. Yeah. And like you know, and sometimes you know people will. You know, that's the thing with studios. They want to, like, if they're going to put money in it, they want to own it, too. Sure. So then, like, people have to, like, really weigh what what's it to them to, like, sell outright something that maybe was their right. baby, you know, for, intellectual for years, property yeah. versus, you know, getting paid for it. So, What do you think about the idea of both of you guys? What do you think about the idea of writing a screenplay which gets purchased and never, ever made? It depends on how much they option it for. <laughs> sure. Is it all just money? I mean, is that well? If if that allows me, me to is, then but... get to another project, then it may be. Like, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, you hear that story all, or like that is that comes up a lot of people. Like, yeah, there, are people, there are people who make a living in Hollywood who've never had anything mm-hmm. p- produced. Yeah, they never never go into production. They're always just in development and pre pro uh, level. I mean, development mostly. Where it's like, yeah, we like this idea. We're going to option it, and we'll do whatever. And we're going to pay you X amount to work on the script, and then you know goes through a couple rounds, and then, right. and then it dies. But then they're on to the next thing, and like, but so apparent, you know, I don't live in L.A. Yeah, there's apparently people who make their living a decent enough living just working on stuff that then never gets yeah. turned over into another thing. I think it would depend, like, uh, how I would feel about it. I mean, obviously, I think. 
I would love to see stuff produced with mm-hmm. my name on it and see my vision executed out in the world and blah, blah, blah. Um, but if it was done poorly right. or like exploitatively, that would be no fun. Right. And I think if you were working on developing scripts and were having a good time and but nothing got produced, that would probably be okay. I think like it'd be really bad if it, nothing was produced and and it was like you made enough money to make a living, but you despised the work because you right. didn't knew that it was like not fulfilling. Yeah. Like that would be really that'd be like having a be like having a day job like I do <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. 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 Um, oh. So I don't know. I think it just depends on the circumstances. Like I wondered just because like in the since we're sort of talking and I feel like we're sort of all of the same level of like just starting to write it right 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 like had too much interest in anything that i've had to write you know that kind of stuff but it's like i think about these things like okay i'm gonna have to be okay with it i'm trying to become less precious with my words i'm Mm. trying to write really well so they like it and purchase it but then if they rewrite it and turn it into like you know a schlock piece then i'm like cool totally fine yeah i don't care yeah yeah. Uh, i couldn't imagine like one of those films gets eight writers attached to it by the end of it you know or you're watching the credits and it's just like there's no way this movie's gonna be good well not to mention the fact that when you look at credits they don't actually explain what work was done in a movie at all like when you're reading the names and their titles it doesn't mean what they mean one of the (laughs) I, i met I met some of the writers from the movie SWAT. I don't know if you guys remember that. It was like, I, I talked, it, it was fr- uh, the guy was at Awesome Film Festival and I was, just in, in the, you know, volunteering or whatever, driving driving him in and uh, was super excited because I you, I watched the old 70s TV show and I was like, this mm-hmm. would be great. And this guy, I can't remember what he had worked on before, but I'd known his name. <clears throat> and, uh, and he was like, yeah, I'm working on it with these, uh, some other people and I've already, you know, started it. And then right before it came out, I looked and there's like six other people and it was just like, oh no. Like this that's is not going to be the in. studio. Yeah, just decided we need to send it to somebody else and and you know touch it up some more and more. And so I can't imagine being that first person who you'd created that script and it was your baby and you're like this is great and they option it and then they're like we're just going to run it into the ground with more and more ideas because you know or whatever. I don't know. <sighs> I think I've had enough sketches that I've written thought were great and then watched people. <laughs> perform them not well or they You're didn't memorize welcome. any lines and then I'm like well I guess I'm going to have to let that go you know, right, like, right. and it's like I get one or two performances of it and then maybe I could bring it up so somebody else can play it but it's like oh okay I yeah. guess that but I mean <laughs> after a few thing. years you, you kind of just <clears throat> let that go you know sure. like yeah it's fine why do yeah. you keep looking at me when you're talking <laughs> have you have you butchered some of her sketches? I hundred percent have. hundred percent have. No, you're a good memorizer. You're a good memorizer. There's some I people think. that don't even try. Um, so uh, before we wrap up, I I feel like there's a, a little chunk in here uh-huh. in, in, that I'd like to ask questions about. Um, and one, I guess, to get to the meat of it, after you started performing improv, right. Uh, flash forward and now you're teaching right and are is your primary improv home is that with merlin works now so i don't really have a primary improv home right now um so for a long time so flash forward so this is why like when the hideout was changing over i was kind of already not part of the hideout ecosystem Mm because i was doing stuff at salvage vanguard theater right um as my own production production company get app and Shane and I do shows together. So we had this kind of like co-branded thing where Merlin Works was doing the classes and Gnapp was producing all the shows mm-hmm. over at SVT. Um, and that basically, that that regime, that lineup basically lasted from 2008 to the very end of 2012. Um, and then through some circum, you know, whatever, through some things, Gnapp uh, um, basically stopped doing regular show production um at the end of uh, at the end of 2012, we moved into thir- you know so 13 Merlin Works moved over to uh, Zach Scott, so they've been over there for the past five years, um, and I taught there for a little bit, but it just like I'm at a place like it wasn't worth it for me like um, financially and time wise to devote my energy to teaching improv. Um, with a, with a family and I got other projects going on or whatever. I think so. I found like the best. Um, I think the best improv teachers are broke single people. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? They really care. They need the money. They're going to go do the extra whatever, you know, all, really commit to being great teachers and all that kind of stuff. I think your most devoted teachers are, are going to be broke single people. Oh, that breaks my heart a little bit. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that's just my, that's just my, to take a step back. And and that doesn't mean that you, if you, that if you aren't that, that you aren't or can't be a right. good teacher. Yeah. But I think like as a, as a pool, as a resource pool, that that's going to be your, that's your best place to go fishing for getting broke teachers. <laughs> um, broke single people. We right, need you. Right. Uh, <laughs> so, um, is it <laughs> all... Yeah. Um, oh, uh, our primary audience. So yeah, broke yeah. single bro, people. Uh, I feel like broke bro bro single people, no kids. Mm -hmm. There, it gets mm -hmm. even more complicated. I mean, that's a is a huge crowd. I'm right. telling you. Yeah, it is a big crowd. crowd. It's a. I mean, that's like ninety five percent of the comedy performers mm -hmm. in the world. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so I haven't really done. I haven't. I haven't taught at Merlin Works in, in years and years. And Shane and I are still really good friends. We still have we get up, still perform periodically. Um, but so, I mean, like, I find myself drawn to the shows at the hideout um, the most of any other place in town, but not always. There's a lot of, there's some shows there that I just don't have any interest in, you know, auditioning for or being mm -hmm. in. So I have directed a couple. So after Gnap um, stopped producing shows at SVT, um, I have directed, I directed a show at the hideout. Two shows? One show. I can't even remember. I directed <laughs> one show at the hideout. I've been in a couple of their main stage shows. I'm actually casting one right now. Um, that that's rehearsal in the rehearsal process. Um, so I would guess it's kind of maybe the hideout, but it's like hideout affiliate. Like they have a very strong core crew of their teachers, their um, tech crew, the people who they you know um, you know run uh, you know uh, whatever for them. And I'm not any of those people, um, but like I do shows over there. Yeah, that's probably. I, but it's not. A, it's not my home. I just kind of find. I just kind of make a home where I can. So. And yeah. you're you're still going out on auditions and hopefully going to be in movies that we watch. On yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. Um, yeah. Right on. I'm, I'm Is it mostly most film auditions that you do or commercial? No, or it's mostly audition and uh, it's mostly uh, commercial auditions. The problem. The the thing is here is like I wish. We, we need to get over the hump industry wise here in Austin like nobody casts local it's it, they, local actors get cast for outside projects sometimes and very rarely yeah um and it's like and if you do it's like there's a handful of parts for like day player kind of roles right um yeah, and I wish that they there because there's a lot of talent here I wish we look into I if it's an outside production, it's happening. But what what chaps my chaps my ass is there a lot of indie producers in town, indie filmmakers in town, who have that same mentality because they want to have a bankable product at the end of the right. day. They <laughs> cast Hollywood people, yeah. you know. They don't cast Austin. They do sometimes, but it's not the main thing. And you know, and like, and and so, and I've been working with Rooster Teeth, and that's they are moving more and more that way too and I think it's part of it it's like a certain kind of bankability outside mm -hmm. of the thing Yeah. and I just there's something you know I wish that there was just a little bit more industry like business presence of the industry here in town so that like it would be a you know people don't feel like they have to go to LA to mm -hmm. make it or whatever and yeah. I get, and like I said I have kids here and I live here and like so I'm I sort of do my best to make make work where it can happen uh, but it's you know I'm not. I'm not going to be the lead in a, you know, in the sun uh, anytime soon. I think that's the only show shooting in town right now. Um, <laughs> but um, you'll be the new guy that <clears throat> ruins everything in the leftovers next season. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Are they, is that? Are they back? still making that? I, I thought they're done. I think they're done. No. I think they're done. No, I don't yeah. know, I, dude. I don't that was know. the last big thing that I heard that was filming in town. <laughs> there was that, and then there's uh, the 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 the, the, the Walking Dead spinoff show. The, oh, right, right, right. Yeah. He's doing some filming here. Yeah, yeah, yeah Fear of the yeah, Walking Dead. Fear of the Walking Dead, right? Yeah, they're coming. Yeah, they just coming made it. Just added a word, so they're like, just get, it's different. It's the same people. They're still playing the same. Well, it's like it's the same same zombie plague, but in a different part of the country or whatever. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And we're in Texas, guys. Totally different. Yeah. It's weird now. Um, speaking of Walking Dead, though, um, 
Have you ever gone to uh, Atlanta? Have you done any stuff there? I mean, I hear that's booming. So, you know, I have toyed with, like, trying to figure out how to get an agent in Atlanta because that's where my wife's family is from.